In April and May 2024, the general elections to the 18th Lok Sabha will be held. More than 97 crore people are eligible to vote in this election. 1.2 crore election officials will be deployed and 10 lakh polling stations will be set up across the country for people to cast their votes. People like you and me have the chance to directly participate in our democracy by pressing a button and deciding the future of the country. The setup of a polling station is standardized across the country. Once you enter, you're guided to the first polling officer who checks your name on the electoral roll. The next officer locks your presence and marks your finger with the indelible ink. You then move towards the EVM and a third officer gives you the go-ahead to vote. Behind the privacy shield, you press the button against your preferred candidate and verify your vote on the VV pad. With this, your vote is cast and you exit the polling station. As you exit, do you wonder what happens to your vote after this? How do EVMs work and can they be hacked? Can someone cheat the system and enter multiple votes? How are EVMs protected to make sure that your vote remains safe? How are EVMs brought to the polling stations and what happens to them after polling? Who are the people who make the entire election process possible? And finally, how are your votes actually counted? In this series of videos, we are going to take a look at all these questions and explain some of the mechanisms set out by the Election Commission of India. When you enter a polling station, you see a room full of officials tasked with managing the entire voting process. As you stand before the voting compartment, you see two machines in front of you. One is the balloting unit with the sequence of contesting candidates, the other is the VV pad, which prints a slip containing details of your vote for verification. But there is another important component which is sitting with one of the officers in front of you. This is the control unit which records your vote. These three machines comprise the EVM. Here's how the three machines communicate. The control unit consists of a ballot button which enables a voter to cast their vote. Once it is pressed, you get to vote using the buttons on the balloting unit next to your choice of candidate. The balloting unit lets the control unit know the serial number against which you press the button. The control unit then relays your choice to the VV pad for printing the slip. This slip remains visible through a transparent window for 7 seconds after which it is stored inside VV pad. The control unit then records your vote and confirms this to you with a buzzer sound. Now if you're wondering why the control unit is kept separate and not in front of you like the other two, the answer is quite simple. What if someone presses the button on the balloting unit repeatedly to record the vote more than once? The design of EVM accounts the same with the ballot button feature. Until the officer presses the ballot button, no vote can be recorded. Additionally, as a safeguard against booth capturing, an EVM only allows up to four votes to be cast in one minute. So if someone attempts booth capturing, the low rate of vote recording will slow them down, giving security forces enough time to arrive at the polling station. To prevent hacking and manipulation, several safeguards have been put in place as per ECI. For instance, the design, production, programming and maintenance of EVMs are done by two PSUs. The program for EVMs is written on a non-reprogrammable chip, which cannot be changed again. EVMs do not have the capability to connect to any network like Bluetooth, Internet, Wi-Fi, removing the possibility of accessing the machine remote. But what ensures that EVMs are not stolen, damaged or compromised in any other way? Let's look at the procedures on storage and transport of EVMs, including the provisions that allow candidates to oversee the entire process. EVMs are always stored in strong rooms. Once the election exercise begins, EVMs are stored in a series of strong rooms with particular specifications. For instance, these rooms can only have one point of entry and exit. There is mandatory video recording of the entry gate. The gate is locked with two locks and the keys are kept with two different officers. A logbook has to be maintained to note everyone who enters the strong room or even comes near it. Finally, armed guards are posted at these strong rooms throughout. Another safeguard is the presence of political parties and contesting candidates or their representatives to be present at all crucial points of the process. For instance, representatives of the candidates, called polling agents, can be present inside polling stations. Afterwards, they can follow the EVMs to the strong room, apply their own seal on the locks and stay on guard 24-7 till the counting day. They can also be present inside the counting station. At other points of the process as well, political parties are informed in advance. For instance, when EVMs are transported from one place to another or when they are tested and mock polls are conducted. Similar safeguards are also applied to the transport of EVMs. Before elections, EVMs are transported in vehicles that are locked and sealed. These are tracked by GPS and political parties are informed in advance to prevent any doubt about movement of EVMs. 
the entire process is also video recorded. The election machinery kicks in well before the Election Commission of India announces the voting schedule. Let's take a look at the timeline. During the non-election period, EVMs are kept in storage rooms at district headquarters or other designated areas in the district. As the election period approaches, the first leg of this journey begins with checking for defective EVMs. This stage is called first level checking or FLC and is done approximately four to six months ahead of tentative polling dates. There is a mock poll conducted right after the FLC to demonstrate the accuracy of EVMs. At several stages from storage to polling stations, a series of randomization of EVMs and personnel involved takes place. The idea behind this is to prevent predictability about which EVM will reach where and who will handle it. The first randomization happens after first level checking where EVMs are allotted to assembly segments within parliamentary constituencies. After the final list of candidates is prepared, which is usually two to three weeks ahead of the actual polls, EVMs are prepared to record votes for contesting candidates. The second leg of their journey now starts with a second randomization to allocate EVMs to polling stations. So until the first randomization, one cannot know which EVM is going to which constituency, making it difficult to manipulate the EVM to favor a particular candidate. And until the second, one cannot know which EVM is going to which polling station. Right after the second randomization, candidates are set in EVMs. During this process, the names of contesting candidates are printed on paper and affixed on top of balloting unit. This essentially means that the sequence of candidates is not known until names are finalized by the Election Commission of India two to three weeks ahead of the polls. So even if someone had control of EVMs in advance, they would not know which button would be allocated to which candidate. So the EVMs are effectively staying secured by three steps. One, physical security related to their movement and storage. Second, the series of randomization to ensure that manipulation remains difficult. And if both of these fail, during the counting process, a sample of VVPAT slips are matched with results from control units to catch any discrepancies. The commissioned EVMs are now ready to be dispersed to polling stations. Here is what's going behind the scenes. One day before the voting day, the officers of the polling team meet each other for the first time ever. The selection of officers for each polling station is randomly done and is revealed only a day before at the dispersal center for EVMs. The officers of polling team are now escorted by security to their respective polling stations. From this moment on, the polling team stays with the EVMs at the polling station under Central Armed Police Force security. On the morning of polling, the officers get in action at the crack of dawn. The first task for the team is to conduct a mock poll to mark the final verification for the EVMs that the voters will use. This poll is done around an hour prior to when the first voter will step in. Officers press button for each candidate and tally the result with VVPAT in presence of representatives of candidates contesting at that polling station. Right after it is successfully tested, the EVMs are reset to zero. With the EVMs tested, the polling opens at 7 a.m. Once the last voter casts their vote, the polling closes and the EVMs are prepared for their journey to counting centers. This begins with the officer pressing the close button on the control unit of EVM. This ensures that no more votes will be recorded in the EVM. To check for any discrepancy, the total count of votes recorded in the control unit is tallied with the manual entry done in the register for voters who participated that day. And after the packing and sealing of the balloting unit, control unit and VVPAT wraps up, they are taken back to strong rooms at counting centers under security. Throughout the day, the representatives of contesting candidates are present at the polling station and once the voting is closed, they accompany the EVMs to the counting center. The strong rooms are now opened on the day of counting. The conclusion of the Lok Sabha elections decides the fate of thousands of candidates who entered the contest. More importantly, the counting day decides who represents us in Parliament. Let's take a look at how the counting of votes takes place. For the purposes of voting and counting, each parliamentary constituency is divided into assembly segments, that is, the assembly constituencies that will fall within its borders. Each of these assembly segments is divided into polling booths to allow voters to access them. Usually, counting of votes for a parliamentary constituency is done in one place. On counting day, the first type of votes to be tallied are those from the postal ballots. 
certain categories of people who cannot travel to polling booth themselves can have their votes recorded through postal ballots. For example, soldiers posted away from the constituency, officials involved in the election process, and senior citizens above the age of 85 years. Counting of EVM votes comes next. For this purpose, the control unit of the EVM machines are taken out of the strong room in the presence of the candidates or their representatives. Once in the counting hall, the serial number and seals of each EVM are verified in presence of these representatives. Pressing the result button on the EVM displays the votes obtained by each candidate. This is noted down, announced and uploaded on the ECI platform. Counting progresses in several rounds in the presence of the candidates as representatives. At the end of the counting of EVM votes, five polling stations for each assembly segment of the constituency are randomly chosen for verification with VVPAT. This means that the VVPAT slips for these five stations are manually counted and matched with the EVM result. There are also some other cases where VVPAT votes are counted. For example, if any EVM does not display the result or if a candidate has specifically requested for votes from a certain polling station to be counted manually. If there is any discrepancy, then the result of the VVPAT slips is used. At the end of the counting, a final result sheet is prepared that contains results from postal ballots and each round of counting for each assembly segment. These are then consolidated to determine the winner from the parliamentary constituency.